Hey guys, alright? Welcome everyone. We start by seeing Kate arriving at an airport with her younger sister Liz. They are on a trip together after not seeing each other for a long time. Kate calls Liz to catch a taxi and go to the hotel where they will be staying. However, Liz forgets her passport on the seat. Upon arriving at the hotel at night, they proceed to check in, and Liz realizes that she left her passport somewhere. The receptionist still grants them access to the room, assuring them they can go to the embassy to resolve the issue on Monday. Due to exhaustion from the journey, Liz falls asleep quickly, while Kate decides to go to the hotel's nightclub to have a drink and something to eat. There, she meets a woman named Mira, who asks her some questions, including whether she is with someone. Kate replies that she is single, and Mira invites her to dance. While they are dancing, two guys approach and introduce themselves to the girls as Andreas and Nikki. Unbeknownst to Kate, Mira takes the keycard to Kate's room and discreetly puts it in her pocket. She then sends a message to her accomplice named Jack, saying that she managed to get the key and subsequently hands it to him without anyone noticing. After dancing and drinking for a while, the guys invite the girls to take a hot air balloon ride to see the beautiful sunrise from above. Kate hesitates to accept, but Mira convinces her, and the four of them head to an open area with several wind turbines. Suspicious of the location and the absence of other balloons or people nearby, Kate tells the guys that she just shared her location with her sister's phone. However, the guys ask them to come down so they can show them something. Meanwhile, Jack, Myra's accomplice, disguises himself as a waiter and, using the keycard provided by Mira, goes to open Kate's room to steal something valuable. Back with the group of friends, the guys show that they were telling the truth about the balloon, which is already inflated and almost ready to go up. After preparing everything, Andreas asks Nikki to tie the rope from the car to the balloon while he helps the girls get in. Meanwhile, Liz wakes up to a message notification from her sister Kate, who sent her a photo saying she made new friends. At that moment, Jack knocks on the door to check if anyone is inside. As there is no response, he enters using the keycard. Liz, thinking it's Kate, decides to hide in the closet to surprise her, but soon realizes it's not Kate but a strange man. She remains silent, but when she receives a message from her friend on her cell phone, Jack hears it and goes to investigate, finding her. Liz screams and runs out to lock herself in the bathroom, causing Jack to leave. Meanwhile, the four friends celebrate by opening a bottle of champagne and drinking. After a while, Kate notices that they are no longer in the same place and alerts the others. Andreas asks Nikki why he didn't tie the rope from the balloon to the car, as instructed. Nikki, being foolish, says he didn't hear Andreas tell him to tie it to the basket. Andreas becomes very irritated with Nikki's stupidity, and they start fighting, while Mira continues filming the scenery. However, she interrupts the fight and calls them over to show them something, which turns out to be their proximity to the wind turbines. Nikki becomes desperate and shouts at Andreas to do something, while Kate also screams at him to lower the basket quickly. But Nikki insists they should go up, because descending would increase the chances of the blades hitting the balloon and causing them to crash. So, going up was their best option, and Andreas indeed increases the gas to make the balloon ascend. However, the ascent is slow, and he crouches down, instructing the others to do the same to protect themselves in case they hit the propellers. Everyone becomes very apprehensive, waiting for something to happen, but after a few moments, with nothing happening, Nick stands up to check. At that moment, the worst happens, and the tip of the propeller still reaches the basket, dragging Nick out and shattering several pieces of wood inside the basket. The balloon's burner becomes stronger, causing it to rise higher and reach the clouds, while the friends inside the basket see that Andreas is severely injured in the leg, with a wooden stake impaled through it. Kate ties her blouse around his leg to stop the bleeding, and he regains consciousness and asks them to turn off the burner. Meanwhile, Liz comes out of the bathroom and runs to the reception, where she immediately reports to the receptionist that there is a man in her room and asks them to call the police. Back in the balloon group, still ascending among the clouds, surprisingly, Nick somehow survives, hanging from a rope, and the girls quickly try to pull him back into the basket. But after a few moments, Nick, probably heavily intoxicated, slips from the rope and falls to his death. Mira expresses deep regret over this, while the balloon continues to rise. 
At the hotel, the police finally arrive, but the receptionist doesn't believe Liz's story. He tells the police that the girl is there without a passport and was left alone by her sister, who spent the entire night at the club's party, suggesting it must have been a dream about a man with a knife in her room since nothing like that ever happened at that hotel. The police officer says they will have to investigate the situation further and asks them to wait. Back in the balloon, Andreas regains consciousness and reveals to the girls that he is not the owner of the balloon, he is just someone who works on the ground crew for the real owner. After a while, the balloon with the group starts to lose altitude, revealing that they have drifted far into the middle of the ocean. Maris says they need to land, but Andreas says they need land to land on. Kay checks her cell phone but sees that there is still no signal. She asks Andreas if he can steer the balloon, to which he responds that they are being carried by the wind. He explains that the air currents are different up there, and he is not sure where they are being taken, but if they descend lower, they might be able to reach the coast. However, the gas in the tank runs out, and they need to switch to the other tank that still has some gas left. Andreas instructs Mira step by step on how to make the switch, and they can keep floating for a while, but only for a maximum of two more hours before they will fall. Andreas apologizes to the girls, saying he just wanted to have fun with them but it turned into this nightmare. Kay tries again to see if her cell phone has a signal, and suddenly she spots a boat in the distance. Everyone starts desperately shouting and waving for help, but they are too far away to be heard, and in response, they only receive waves back from the people on the boat. At that moment, Andreas loses his balance and falls into the sea. The girls try to untie a rope to throw to him, but before they can do so, Andreas, unable to swim and severely injured, drowns. To make matters worse, they realize that the boat is getting farther and farther away, and realizing that shouting is futile, Kate has the idea to use the banner in the basket to write an SOS on it. They detach the banner and start writing with lipstick, but it quickly runs out, leaving Kate with no other choice but to cut her hand with a pair of scissors and continue writing with her own blood. After writing the distress signal initials, the girls scream and shake the banner in the hope of being seen. However, everyone on the boat is just enjoying themselves and not paying any attention to the balloon. Soon, they drift away, eliminating any possibility of the girls being seen. With that, they are devastated and frustrated, being carried further and further into unknown territory. Meanwhile, at the hotel, a social worker named Sophia arrives and talks to Liz, saying that she needs to take her somewhere where her parents and immigration can communicate. In the balloon, Kate is in pain as she tries to stop the bleeding in her hand. Mira helps her and ties her blouse around it to stop the bleeding. Kate notices a wound on Myra's forehead, and Mira looks at it with her mirror, which will later be crucial for their survival, stay tuned to see how. Liz is in the car with Sophia, heading to the Child Protective Services office. However, Liz tells Sophia that they need to find her sister, who had shared her location with her earlier in the morning. Sophia doesn't believe this possibility, but eventually, Liz convinces her, and they head to the location. Upon arriving, they see that the place is empty due to it being a holiday. Liz goes to Andreas' car and opens the door, finding the cell phone he had left recording. She quickly realizes that they are in the balloon. Liz shows it to Sophia, who immediately asks where the balloon might have gone with the wind. Sophia says they probably went to the sea, but they would pass by the wind turbines first. Liz wants to go to the sea right away to find her sister, but Sophia tries to call the balloon pilot's number, which was on the banner, only to discover that the pilot is on vacation with his family. Knowing that their balloon is in flight, she says she will make a report. Meanwhile, in the balloon, Kate has tied her pants to the broken part of the basket to reduce the risk of falling. They come up with the idea of using something to create smoke and attract attention. After a while, Mira says that they may only have another 30 minutes of gas to keep the balloon afloat. Kate tries once again to see if her cell phone has a signal but fails. At that moment, Mira remembers something she learned that might work. She takes a piece of wire and opens Kate's cell phone, placing the wire in a specific small cavity to improve the signal range. It works, and Kate is able to share her location with her sister again. Liz receives the new location and informs Sophia that her sister is somewhere in the open sea. But at that moment, Kate's cell phone battery dies. 
Liz tries and manages to convince Sophia to find a boat and go to the received location in the sea. Meanwhile, the girls in the balloon realize that they have also run out of gas and will soon fall into the water. They start climbing onto the burner support, hoping that the basket will float on the water. Liz and Sophia arrive at a boat rental place, and Sophia goes to talk to someone while Liz waits in the car. However, Liz runs to a boat and tries to start it, but she fails. Sophia sees her and rushes to stop her. Meanwhile, the balloon reaches the water, and the basket starts to sink. Thinking that this is the end, Mira confesses to Kate that she stole her keycard and gave it to Jack, her accomplice, to steal something from her. Kate is furious but quickly forgives her. At that moment, Liz convinces Sophia to take the boat and go after her sister. But now, the basket has completely sunk, and the girls are having trouble getting out from under the tarp. Kate knows how to swim, but Mira doesn't, and she needs help. Kate manages to pull her out just in time, and as the basket sinks with everything, an empty gas cylinder emerges and floats near the girls. This is a good thing because now they have something to hold on to, increasing their chances of survival. Liz and Sophia are having trouble with the boat, so they are forced to row to reach their destination. Sophia tells Liz that what they are doing is madness and that she should accept that her sister left her, but Liz says she doesn't believe that and won't give up, so they keep going. Some time later, they are becoming exhausted and cold when Kate sees a massive cargo ship in the distance. They are happy, thinking that it will be their salvation, but they soon realize that it's not that simple. Because not only is it unlikely for anyone to see them, but the massive cargo ship proves to be a danger for the two of them as it is heading towards them. Understanding the danger, the girls desperately hurry to get out of the ship's path and avoid being hit. Fortunately, the girls manage to move as far as they can to the side, but as expected, they go unnoticed by anyone on the ship and they find themselves in the same situation again. Time passes, and Liz and Sophia have rowed as close as they could to the location shared by Kate. Liz then has the idea to use a horn and shout for Kate, hoping that somehow her sister might hear them. Sophia tries to tell her that there is no one there, but Liz doesn't give up. Then, the girls, already very tired, hear the sound of the horn, but due to the distance and their weakened voices, their cries cannot be heard by Liz and Sophia. It is at this moment that Mira has the idea to use the mirror we saw her with earlier. With it, they can create a signal by reflecting the sunlight. Thankfully, Liz manages to see the distant light and they quickly paddle towards it. The girls approach the boat and get inside, finally feeling safe with Liz and Sophia. They start rowing towards the beach.